just a rubbish board, isn't it? Alright, morning guys. Me and Luca here today. We've got an RCD that's intermittently tripping. So we're gonna do a bit of an EICR, bit of a fault find. Let's go see what we can find. This board is having issues with a tripping RCD. Can you tell me in the comments below when you think this board was installed? This is the half of the board that's having issues. As you can see, we've got all these circuits on one RCD. Same with the top side. You've got a load of circuits up here, all on one RCD. That side's not having any issues, so we're not gonna focus on that today. We're gonna be looking at this side, but if we look into the circuits, we've got a hob, kitchen sockets which could have a lot of different appliances plugged into, an oven which leak into earth as they get older they seem to leak more, an immersion heater which is also an element which could be leaking and then lights which could have all sorts of electronics on so let's get into the EICR on this half and see what we can find. Oh, is, this the top? is that a hinge? Whoa. Today's video is sponsored by TIS and they've kindly sent us the TIS 570 earth leakage clamp meter. This does AC and DC and it's gonna come in really handy today because we've actually got an RCD tripping issue. Let's see what we find and hopefully we can show some of the features which might help you guys. We're gonna just, before we start anything, just go around the line and neutral to the board and see what the general leakage is. Okay, so you can see we've got 31.6 milliamps and that's AC leakage. So if that was on one RCD, that would have tripped, but that's split across two. So what we can do, if I get Luke to turn off one of the RCDs, we'll see what's on each one and we can sort of narrow down. Okay, so Luke's turned off the bottom row um, RCD. So the top half, which we're not gonna be working on today, has got 14.6 milliamps of leakage. So if I get him to turn that RCD back on and turn the other one off, we can see what we're gonna be dealing with on our side. Yeah, that's the one we're working on now. Okay, so you can see the RCD we're working on has got 20 milliamps of earth leakage. That's so on the limit and another couple of milliamps, that's gonna trip out. That just shows all them circuits on one RCD is too much for it to handle. So if it was a RCBO board and every circuit had its own RCBO, then you've got a bigger tolerance each circuit can have the 30 milliamp protection um, so you can have a lot more earth leakage on each circuit without anything tripping. Okay so the customer handed us the um, EIC from when he had the board installed, installed a couple of years ago um, and we're just going through it it's just nice when you have something like that you can go through it and just see what results they get and what they wrote down sort of thing and instantly we've known so when we've turned off all the circuits Lee's gone into the meter cupboard and looked at the main cutout views. On there, he, when he's opened it up, it says 60, but I'll see if you look on the previous um, test results, it says 100. So in C, that sort of I mean, brings your attention to it. What other things have they wrote down that maybe they've got wrong or they couldn't be true. So yeah, it's always handy when you have the previous one. Failed. Classic. Yeah. Okay, so we're just going to do uh, tests on the RCDs. We're just working on this bottom row. So I put it to auto and 30 milliamps. I'm just going to do an RCD test. And you can see, so half times it's fine, it passes. And at one time, so 300. So yeah, that basically means that RCD has failed and it's not working properly. So some RCDs don't actually, well, they don't actually like you testing at them. Um, so there's another way of testing it. So if we go to any sockets that are on these on this RCD, so the socket circuits, I think it's downstairs and upstairs. If we actually plug it in and do an RCD test from then, that might actually make it trip. So we'll go and do that now. Right, so kitchen sockets, one of the circuits that was on it. So we'll just plug in the adapter and see if this makes it trip. Done it. Yeah, it's not turning back on. Let me turn some of the circuits off. Just it said TRP didn't, didn't start reading. So it's pro maybe it leaked so much that it trips without that. Yeah. It's just a rubbish board, isn't it? Look, no grommets trip on the back of the board. Jeez. No security tags. Yeah. 
no label on the MET, the tails are stripped too far in the Henley block, yeah. and that knockout's like half yeah. locked in. They're all off apart from the kitchen. Okay, so you've got 4.3 milliamps of leakage on the kitchen. So should I try trip time again? Yeah, what it might be worth us doing actually is do that same thing one by one on a bit of paper and write, write down what reading. milliamps is leaking on each circuit because then we can say yeah. what ones are higher, what ones are lower. Right, I'll do that. Yes, it then the Yeah, it's failed again from here, Lee. So like just see, even at the sockets, plugging in with the adapter is still failing at the RCD. So yeah, obviously there is a problem that RCD would, which will need replacing. So Hobbs number one, so what's that? Right, ready? Yep. 5.8. Is that on? Yep. 0, 0, 0, 0.4. Next Three one. The gram. Five point oh, oh hang on. 5.8. Sockets up down. 5.8, 1.5, 1.4, 0.3. So just then we went through every single circuit on here that's on this RCD and recorded this earth leakage. And none of them stood out as like really bad or overloaded sort of thing. So basically what it will be is the combination of all of these circuits on one, one RCD, which is taking it up to that 30 milliamp to cause it to trip. So in cases like this, this is why new boards have RCBOs because each circuit then will allow it to have an up to 30 milliamps of earth leakage before it trips. So basically you'd have an RCD on each one basically, which would allow you that allowance. So the main thing we think it might be is earth leakage from this oven, which happens quite a lot. I mean, it's a fairly new one. Like I said, we had the results from where, from what the earth leakage was when it wasn't on. So we're gonna turn it on, wait for it to build up to temperature and then watch that earth leakage increase. I just need to work out how you turn this on. Oh, great. Um, whoa, what the? It sound like a coffee machine. <laughs> oh, okay. Put that full 200 degrees. So we should watch that earth leakage increase. While Luke's taken off the accessories in the kitchen, I've just done insulation resistance on the first circuit, which is the hob. And now I've got line and CPC linked together so we can get our R1, R2. Just work our way through. So it's a bit worrying really. This board was only installed in 2020, according to the client and the uh, label on the front. So they've had a kitchen extension done and they must have done the board change with that. It's only three years old and they've stuck all this amount of circuits on two RCDs. It's a pretty budget brand as well. It's not one you come across often. You can look at the install, there's no grommet strip on the back. They've used a 2.5 earth to go from the SPD. Just lots of uh, things that aren't really up to scratch and you think that's not even that old. And if this has got to be replaced with RCBOs because of the amount of leakage on all the circuits, then it's just a total waste of money to the client in the first place getting this done so it it just shows like a bit of planning on jobs uh, in the start then you're saving people money and you're making things safer get rid of split loads i say the leakage we're looking for is intentional earth leakage so appliances we have many with elements like uh, cookers immersion heaters but then other appliances that you plug in computers washing machines they're all designed to leak a small amount to earth so that's what we're looking for with this fault because all them circuits are on one rcd so you've got all these smaller amounts of intentional earth leakage and they're going over the amount the rcd can take so the other type of earth leakage is unintentional earth leakage and that would be a breakdown of insulation or if someone was hanging a picture and banged a nail through and it shorted out line to earth. Unintentional earth leakage is if your MCB's tripping out because it's got a dead short. Intentional is a bit different to find, but a lot of the time I've found ovens are a good culprit. So if they're slightly old, the elements can break down. And an easy way to find that is if you can find that your oven is leaking a lot to earth, turn all your other circuits off, put your clamp meter around the line of neutral of the oven circuit, turn the oven on, and then just watch the earth leakage. And if it's old and leaking a lot, 
I found in the past that you can just watch it and it'll just go up and up and up and then the RCD will just trip because there's so much earth leakage on it. And then that's usually when you've got to say to the customer, really you need to look at the element in your oven um, or get a new oven. This case today, there's not one item that is causing it to trip out and we can say yes, that item. It's just small amounts over all the circuits. So we're gonna carry on with our test anyway. And I think all we can do is just suggest that the board gets changed to RCBOs and then that'll just clear the problem. So the TIS 570, let me just turn that light on, also does DC leakage. So you can see we've only got 1.5 milliamps of DC leakage over the whole consume unit, which isn't a lot. Really, you wanna be fitting type ARCDs. These are type AC. Anything over six milliamps can blind a type AC RCD. It won't work how it's supposed to. So if you've got things like solar PV or electric car chargers, anything that can leak a lot of DC, you don't wanna be fitting type AC anymore. Ideally, if you could afford, you wanna be installing type F or type B, but they can be very expensive. So type A is what we seem to install nowadays um, and that can cover a bit more DC leakage than what AC can. That's a bit of a bad design. I'll just show you. They put the sockets right above, like a socket like this, if you push it in, it's putting pressure and doesn't want to go in fully because of that. So I've done our test on the kitchen sockets. Just gonna go around with a socket tester and just check the polarity and also we'll just check that nothing's been wired in the wrong terminals in the back. TIS 570 also does continuity, so if you flick it around and you can have it with or without a beep, so we're going to have it with. Touch them together, you can see that they've got continuity, let go, and it loses it. This is a good example to show you because this is the ring that does upstairs, so we're just checking with the Mega. You've got continuity on your lines, continuity on the CPC, but when we go to the neutral, there's no continuity. So that's just a quick, easy way. If you're doing a board change, maybe someone else, one of your other colleagues has done the paperwork and you just wanted to double check or confirm that there's continuity. We know we've got no neutral continuity here. So now we'll have to stick that down as further investigation. And if we get any more time today, we'll take a few off and see if we can find it. Thirty-six. I've counted twenty. Yeah, but I wouldn't even look at that because everything's been. There's no way. It's like sixty sockets in this house. Trying to carry out an uh, insulation resistance test on the sockets, which do up and down. It's got quite a few points on it. Linked out line um, to neutral, and testing that down to the earth, which is taken out as well. But we're just getting the same reading of zero point three nine. So we were going around the property, unplugging stuff. There's a lot of like amplifiers, TV equipment, different bits and pieces, just trying to get all them unplugged, retest. But at the moment, we're still getting 0 0.39. So there must be something somewhere which is bringing that reading down. Hopefully we can find it, unplug it, and then we'll get a nice clear IR reading. We're getting 42. Um, mega ohms now on insulation resistance and the last things we unplugged was the router and some data equipment in the office so it just shows just go around because one thing can bring your reading down so at least we don't have to put that down as further investigation now that's a good reading we'll put that in move on to the next circuit I'm just going to change some of the labeling on these because one of the circuits we just done literally said sockets up but all we found it doing is two sockets in the front bedroom. So we're just gonna relabel it. It just helps people in the future, like if it was a bit more descriptive, you'd look and you'd just straight away, yeah, we're there, test it, like not going around the whole house trying to find 
where you, like where you're working really. So we've got DC leakage and DC voltage on this as well and we've not really got any DC in the property that I can physically test, no EVs or PVs. So I thought I'd come out to the van, check on the battery. So I've gone to DC voltage. There you go. See we've got 12 volts coming from the fan battery. It'll show you the polarities wrong as well. So if I put the probes on the opposite way, you see it comes up as minus 12, which is quite handy. So that would be good for doing solar panels. If you wanted to test your voltage, make sure you've got your positive and negative the right way around into your isolators. So we've just counted the number of points um, on the upstairs lighting, rig, lighting circuit. So quite a few of the bathrooms have these down lights. So we're just gonna pull a couple of them down and just check the connections in there and check the IP rating of them. So that's another light, checked in another bathroom and terminations are fine and it's IP rated. We'll just check in a few different rooms and uh, make sure they're all up to scratch, but so far so good. I'm gonna put this circuit away now. We've just tested the upstairs lights. So last one on this bottom row is the downstairs lights and it looks like it does the outside lights as well. We've got two lighting circuits in here. So we'll take them out, get that tested. We know what the issue is with this trip in. If he does want the board change, We'll have to come back to test this top half as well just to know that they're okay but he didn't want that done this visit and then, yeah i think really if the board's changed and it's all rcbo's put in then there shouldn't really be any issues after that just see if these outside lights are on that circuit all right last thing we're going to do before the cover goes back on we've clamped to the met in the board we're going to walk around just do an r2 test on anything metal that should be earthed and anything that's not we can just make an observation of. So you can literally just touch onto what should be earthed like the screw on the back plate. Oh, It's more like these sort of ones because they're a metal face plate. Okay so the earth on this one here's the face plate where it should go but it's literally earth in the back box because these are plastic these lugs obviously it's not transferring so I'm just going to quickly take that out and put it into that earth one there. Just from doing that quick R2 test at the end, going around, touching all the metal work. So we found two more um, problems. So the earth wasn't connected to the light switch by the front door, which looks just fixed. And this class one fitting hasn't actually got an earth. It's just got a two core cable to it. So that'll have to be noted down on the observations. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed today's video, guys, regarding this earth leakage. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments below, and we'll see you on the next one.